The last ice age is one of the most iconic periods of time in prehistory. Despite only taking place fairly recently, the Earth was in a much different state at this time. True to its name, the planet was much colder, with huge ice sheets around the world. Yet despite this, life was abundant in the most surprising of regions. This includes the regions of northern Eurasia as well as North America. These areas aren't necessarily barren wastelands today, but a simple comparison showcases just how different fauna and flora was between these two periods separated only by a few thousand years. The sight of massive herbivores and ferocious carnivores living on vast expanses is one that we only really see today in the African plains. During the Pleistocene, however, such a scene could be found elsewhere, from Europe, Asia, to the Americas. This age brought with it a plethora of interesting creatures, from mammoths to woolly rhinos to cave bears and lions. Unfortunately, most of these animals are long extinct, never to be seen again. But what if that wasn't the case? What if the ecosystem of the late Pleistocene could be brought back, at least in one specific region of the world? That question is what brought together a team of scientists led by Sergei and Nikita Zimov to try and recreate the landscape that was prevalent throughout the late Pleistocene of Eurasia and North America. That's the main core of the Pleistocene Park project. It isn't so much to create a living time capsule of extinct animals roaming through Siberia, as cool as that would be. Rather, it's to bring back the grassland ecosystem that had once vanished. These grasslands are stated to have a variety of environmental benefits, such as the increased absorption of greenhouse gases, the ability to reflect more heat from the sun, and the reduction of methane emissions. These Pleistocene grasslands, if revived, could help fight the problems caused by issues such as global warming. The park first started in 1988, when Sergei Zimov bought a dozen Yakutian horses to the region. Unfortunately, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the project was put on hold and the horses were given away. Thankfully, it started back up in 1996 with 144 square kilometers given by the Russian government. Since then, Pleistocene Park has expanded a great deal, with even more animal species present as well as grasses becoming more and more prevalent. We should probably begin by listing off what animals currently exist in the park. According to the website, these include Bactrian camels, fur goats, Kalmakayan cows, moose, muskox, plains bison, reindeer, sheep, Y-center European bison, yaks, and Yakutian horses. You'll notice that with a lot of animals, they're just domesticated analogs of animals that used to live in these regions. For example, ancient Ice Age camels have been replaced by the domesticated Bactrian camels and wild horses have been replaced by their domesticated relatives. There are also a few carnivores present in the park as well, such as lynxes and wolves, but these animals were already present prior to the start of the project. In addition, there are also plans to introduce several new animals to the park in the near future. These include the wood bison, the elk, the wild yak, snow sheep, wild Bactrian camel, Siberian roe deer, and the saiga antelope. The reason these animals aren't yet in the park is obvious. These creatures are all wild and thus are naturally harder to bring into a new environment. In addition, some species such as the wild Bactrian camel and the saiga antelope are endangered. Extra care needs to be taken with the movement of these animals. The last thing people would want would be to further endanger these critically threatened species with poor planning. The team also intends on introducing the Siberian tiger to the park. This would mark the first introduced carnivore, but again, given the species' elusive and threatened state, it'll take longer to bring these plans to fruition. Obviously, when you think of the name Pleistocene Park, the first thought that comes to people's minds aren't the animals we've listed above. Rather, what people want to know about are the extinct megafauna that once populated Eurasia that could potentially come back. There are plans for the reintroduction of these animals as well, but they all come with various levels of feasibility. The most iconic prehistoric mammal is also the one that we've made the most progress on bringing back to the wild. The woolly mammoth has been found numerous times in the form of extremely well-preserved specimens. To go into the process of cloning a mammoth is a topic that deserves its own video, but in short, while we can't necessarily resurrect the exact species back to life, we can theoretically get very close through processes such as researching the compatibility of it with other species such as the closely related Asian elephant. Other herbivores the team aims to one day bring are the woolly rhino, steppe bison, and megaloceros, otherwise known as the Irish elk. These large herbivores will not only help sell the Pleistocene aspect of the park, they'd also be useful in shaping the environment just as they did in the past. This includes the spread of grasses that emerge from more large herbivores constantly consuming rival plant matter like shrubs and mosses. In addition, the mass movement of these large animals will trample down on the snow, destroying any layers underneath that could potentially heat up permafrost which helps enrich arctic environments. There are also plans to introduce some extinct carnivores such as the cave bear as well as the cave lion which used to live around the area. These species would be vital to hunt the larger megafauna and enrich the ecosystem of the park. On paper, the idea of Pleistocene Park sounds great. Even without the extinct animals, reinvigorating this region with new species could have some potentially great benefits, especially to threatened animals like wild Bactrian camels. 
However, there have been a few criticisms levied at the park. One of the most prominent is that this project would destroy the existing ecosystem already there. In response to this criticism, Sergei Zima presents a simple answer. He states that the tundra present in the region right now is not a true ecosystem, and it's one that shouldn't have naturally occurred. Had the megafauna of the late Pleistocene not went extinct in such a rapid fashion, we would see this area be covered in grasslands today. He simply wants to reverse this rapid and what he and his team believe to be partially man-made change. He also argues that the species already present would only thrive further under grassland conditions, and if larger introduced species became a problem for the environment, they could easily be relocated. The subject of Pleistocene Park is one with a lot of depth behind it. This video serves mainly as a basic introduction to the idea of the project, and I encourage you to do further research on the park if you're interested in learning more. I provided their website in the description. If you ask me, the idea of bringing back grasslands to northern Eurasia sounds really cool, but in all honesty, this is not the kind of project that would bear fruit extremely soon. It's a process that could take decades upon decades, perhaps even longer. It's unlikely that we'd even be able to see any true Siberian grasslands emerge in our lifetimes, let alone witness the sights of woolly mammoths and rhinos once again roaming the earth. As much of a buzzkill I sound like right now, I don't want to diminish the potential importance that this park could bring. Just because we can't see the direct impact of something right away doesn't mean we shouldn't take the steps of trying to make that change. For the sake of the planet and humanity in the coming years and generations, projects like this show a glimmer of hope in a world where issues such as climate and the environment are at a critical juncture. I also shouldn't discount the fact that there are changes made to the landscape of Pleistocene Park right now. While we don't see the sprawling grasslands of the Mammoth Steppe, there's definitely more of an abundance of grasses, and the existing herbivores have done a lot of work in moving layers of snow and flattening terrain. All that being said, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really hope we get to see mammoths soon. If baby elephants are already a top tier cute animal, the idea of how cute baby mammoths would be is mind shattering. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. As always, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time.